Hi, I'm going to show you how to create secondary movement using the C and S curve. So what we're going to do first is I'm in Toon Boom Harmony. I've given myself a ground plane and you'll notice that I've given myself a bit of a, a flagpole here to pin my movement onto because we don't have any direct source of secondary such as a bouncing ball or a head or a body that can sort of show us how the secondary would move. Uh, we're imagining if it's like water or wind and it's uh, that is what's moving the secondary. So there's no real clear source. So after you give yourself uh, your flagpole, you're going to draw a sideways figure eight. So here, and again, not too thick and not too wide. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be, you know, relatively symmetrical. Um, and again, you can always, you know, redraw it. It's only a figure eight. You can take your busy editor, which is the, a t the, the white arrow tool, and kind of just, you know, push and pull it if you want to get really specific with it. This is, this is good enough for what we're going to be doing. As I say that, I keep fixing it. There we go. Okay. Um, and then what I can do in addition is kind of give myself directional cues. So I can say, you know, I know I'm going to be going up this way around this way, up and over this way. So this will be just visual reminders to me of what direction my object will be going. So I'm going to lock this down and on my secondary layer, a nude layer, I'm going to lay in a C. Use my pencil tool because I can easily uh, adjust this. So I know I'm, my tip is going this way. Turn down the smoothing and I'm going to have a C like that. And if it's a little lumpy in places, I can just select it and use what, uh, this is the smooth tool. So hit smooth and it just kind of, you know, makes it a little neater. You can also use the Bezier editor to sort of clean it up as you like. So here is my first C. I'm going to take my select. I'm going to select it and copy it, making sure that I'm doing so in the stage, not in the timeline. There is a difference. Copy and go to um, frame five and paste because that's the end of my loop. And then at frame three, I'm going to paste again, but now what I'm going to do is flip it. So I have drawing one, drawing two, drawing one. And then I'm gonna take this and recenter it because everything is gonna be pinned around this bottom base right here. So I just wanna make sure that this is the opposite. So I have C, opposite C, back to C. Next, I'm going to put in the S curve. So here, going back to my pencil tool, I can put my onion skinning on. I know that I'm going in this direction. So I know that I'm going to be wrapping around here and pushing that way because I know that my seaweed's going to reverse and I know that I want this way to go that way. So I have here to here to here. I should have used a color. Here, I'm going to change this color so it's not obviously an onion skinning. So here to here to here. And again, I can do the same thing where I can select this and I can kind of smooth it. But do you see how it's sort of a, a very gentle S? And you can adjust this curve depending on how flexible your item is um, like that. So over here it's a nice soft S. And we can do the exact same thing. We can copy this using the select tool, control or Apple C, go to frame four, make sure your stage is selected and paste. And then we're going to flip it using this operation in our properties panel, like so, and recenter it. And we have sort of the architecture of our wave principle. Now it's going to look really, really fast when you play it. You're gonna be like, that is way too fast. That's okay, because what we're gonna start doing now is laying in in-betweens. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our timeline, select our drawings, right click, go to exposure, and we're going to set the exposure to two. And then we're going to delete every other frame so that we still have all our drawings, but now we have a space in which to lay in an in-between. Go to my pencil tool, and now we're just going to basically lay in in-betweens. We're always going to be making sure that we intersect right there 
and we're going to be the curve is going to be tracing this top edge in the direction that we've uh, decided. So here we have frame one, frame two, frame three. Here we're just going to we know that this is looping around, and now it's down here, right there. That's frame four, and again you can use the Bezier tool to kind of finesse it as you like, right there. And then same thing, frame six. We're going to have it loop. It's going up around this curve, starting to reverse at the bottom, like that. And then right here, our last in between will be right there. And again, you always kind of want to watch this area because it's really easy to sort of, as it gets more precise, it's easier to sort of miss. So here, if we play this back, the movement's still there, but it's still a little fast. So what you would just do is keep dropping in in-betweens from this point out. So, you know, depending on how fast or how slow this movement is, you would then, you know, bump this to twos, delete every other frame. And then drop in in-betweens. So here again, in-between, in-between, in-between in between, 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 so in between, so it starts reversing, and again making sure that you kind of intersect and then maybe I want to kind of start pushing this a little bit over to sort of really kind of get more of a snap around. There we go. And then you can even drag this behind a little bit more like that. Then to there, and then in between, in between, in between. Again, just using my busy editor kind of, there we go, get that a little bit more perfect. And then one more in between here like so. And I can just select this and sort of just smooth it just to kind of clean it up. Um, and then again, I could preview this by taking a look at it. It's getting smoother and smoother. Um, one easy way to kind of preview the speed and kind of how long this is going to be is you can select this and right click, go to exposure, and you don't have to set it to one, two, or three. You could set it to any number you wanted. You could set this to 12 or 25. Let's try five or six. Let's do five. Click OK. And you can kind of get a sense. It's going to be choppy, but you know, it gives you a better sense of, you know, maybe you want it to be kind of drifting lazily uh, in the water or, or in the air. Um, and then obviously you would get rid of the guide uh, when you are finished. Oop. So now you would just have this alone. Now again, it's a little bit futzy at the bottom. Um, that's where you need to get really precise with things. So um, I just like to cover it up with something as a cheat, but uh, know that this sort of tends to be the, the hardest area to keep consistent. Um, but yeah, that's how you would do secondary with the S and C curve. At this point, you would just keep dropping in in-betweens, eventually map on volumes. If you wanted this to be, you know, say this is a tail, you would probably want to do a cleanup layer um, that is, you know, say you have some sort of cat tail. Um, you know, you would map on the volume according to what your sort of limp spaghetti or rope has given you. Um, or if it's a fox tail. Or if it's, uh, you know, maybe this represents sort of a, like a, a ghost. You're like, whoa, it's a creepy ghost. Um, and then what you would do is you would just take your secondary and your, your cleanup ghost, use your transform, just do it on the side, and now you have it on the side. So again, I just like doing it vertically at first, but you can orient it any direction you want um, according to what the object is. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.